<clears throat> What's up, guys? It is Tacos Drew's Day, and uh, I got to thinking the next segment I want to go over is uh, things I think CrossFitters or athletes should know. All right, so we have behind us in the CrossFit world, we call this pyramid the theoretical hierarchy of development or how do you develop athletes, all right? Basically, how you train people. And I want you to notice something right off the bat, that it is a pyramid, all right? A pyramid or a triangle is the strongest shape in engineering, right? Arc, I know, arch, I know you guys may argue that, but it's a fairly strong shape. It's only as strong as this foundation, however, so we're gonna talk about that. If the, the time you spend up here is more than the time you spend down here, your pyramid will topple at some point. In addition, in um, Greek language, the triangle shape is delta, all right? So you have alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Delta in math and engineering, it means change. So not only do we have to have a strong foundation that kind of builds in the pyramid's height, but this is how we change people. So the delta, this is a huge delta symbol about change. So in order to change yourself, we've got to follow this template pretty closely. So for you guys that have seen this before, awesome. You can tune out if you want. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to say something you haven't heard before. If you guys that haven't seen this, this is how we train you. All right, this is how, uh, this is, this is kind of our gym's coaching philosophy when it comes to building athletes. Um, now, We've covered nutrition at, at some point, and all I wanna do now is explain that no matter how hard you train, no matter uh, how many PRs you set in the gym, at some point, having a depleted foundation of nutrition will catch up with you, all right? In exercise science, kind of like a a buzz phrase is you can't out a bad you can't out train a bad diet. That's true. All right, it will catch up with you eventually. And so the more you can focus on nutrition and understand that that fuel component to what we do, and also the recovery component to what we do, is uh, is vitally important for continued improvement. All right. So in, in here also like. You can kind of put rest and recovery as well. That's rest. It, it says rest and recovery as well. All right. Once you kind of get this, and we're always going to talk about nutrition in the gym, uh, I always challenge you guys to, to ask coaches about nutrition, kind of what their thought process is, because as we see um, newer and newer athletes come in the gym, and even athletes that have been here for a while, the same nutrition guidelines we give out for, for us as coaches works for the athletes as well. All right. Basic tenets is uh, – eating meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, no sugar. All right, for the most part, I wanna have a no sugar-based diet. It helps me out a lot in recovery and performance. Next evolution up. So we're always gonna talk about this. It's important that we keep a foundation. Next evolution up is basic strength and conditioning. All right, getting your muscles stronger and getting your body in better general condition. Okay, that's the basis of CrossFit is a general physical preparedness program. Take a uh, like a, a hopper, all right, so like just a big bucket, right, and put every single imaginable task in that bucket. Anything, hauling furniture, uh, pushing a car, deadlifting, running a marathon, any possible physical task, put it in that bucket, all right? What we want to do is make sure that whatever comes out of that bucket, you've got the capacity to do it, all right? Whatever it is, to do it, and do it fairly well. Okay, so that's general strength and conditioning. Now, uh, if you look at how CrossFit defines this, it says metabolic conditioning, all right? I break it down a little bit further. I agree metabolic conditioning is there. Uh, you've got the three main energy pathways, uh, the immediate pathway, ATP, and uh, creatine phosphate pathway, you have glycolysis, and you have your aerobic 
uh, pathway as well. But I want to get athletes stronger as well. Okay, our goal is to get you stronger. I have never seen in the history of training an athlete that gets stronger that makes them less capable. All right, if I can get you stronger, one more pound on one lift. All right physical strength in the muscles, not only there, but also in the ligaments and tendons, like that, that like tensile strength, that like ability to hold vast ligaments and tendons and muscles, you are more useful in life, right? And conditioning is, do you have decent ability to operate in all three of our energy pathways? So that immediate energy pathway is can you run all out for 100 meters, all right? Can you go all out? Do you have that capacity to run all out, all right? That's the immediate energy pathway. Secondary pathway is glycolysis. Do you have the ability to run hard for 800 meters, all right? And, and we know that as like basically all CrossFit workouts is kind of like that burning sensation is that glycolytic pathway. And then finally, can you do something long distance? All right, so that was a, a super brief overview of like different types of exercises in those energy systems. We use our workouts to, uh, to kind of get this done. So in any given week, I want you to look out for, there should be a sprint feeling workout. There should be kind of a, uh, a moderate but just sucky feeling workout, all right? Super burning, like everything just it feels on fire, all right? And there should be a longer workout in every single week. And sometimes you might see sprint workouts as just super heavy lifting. All right? That's kind of how we do it in CrossFit. We're getting you generally ready for anything. Once we establish that, all right, then you go one level up to gymnastics. This isn't necessarily um, doing the gymnastic movements in a CrossFit workout, like today is Cindy, push-ups, pull-ups, and air squats, all right? Gymnastics I'm talking about is one evolution higher. So this, there's some gymnastics down here, basic body awareness, body control. It's kind of what gymnastics is, and using uh, your body weight as the, as the force you're kind of driving against is gymnastics. Here, because it's one level higher than that, is going to be now it's more of a coordinated, more of a, 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 a fine motor control gymnastic movement. Um, actually doing the sport of gymnastics, using rings and propelling yourself around implements and, and things like that. Uh, this is your, your muscle ups, your bar muscle ups, your handstand walking, kind of handstand push ups. Uh, you get into the more like sporty gymnastic stuff, your vaulting, your parallel bars, your uneven bars for the girls, things like that, like higher order gymnastics. Thinking about athletes now, like what we commonly know athletes, imagine the amount of body control that um, football wide receivers have to have, right, to catch a ball and to contort their body in a way where they're staying in bounds. All right, um, Julio Jones for the Atlanta Falcons does a good job of this. Uh, there's just, they're amazing at using their body and kind of knowing where their body is in space and time. All right, that's kind of that upper echelon gymnastics. All right, it is controlling your body, right? Being able to propel your body as well. So this is also, you can kind of say here, it's more of a, uh, of a plyometric movement as well. So in strength and conditioning, like I don't ever want to introduce plyometrics so that like rebound jumping and some bounding across the floor and you know those really aggressive dynamic push-ups until I've developed some sort of rudimentary strength and conditioning. All right? If I do that too early, I absolutely can injure somebody. All right. So we are constantly trying to establish this before we do anything like that. Now here's the here's the here's the catch 22 with this. This stuff up here is sexy. Like it is awesome to look at. You come in the gym for the first time and see somebody doing muscle ups like big sets of ring muscle ups. You see them doing these like 
jumps and rebound box jumps and stuff like that. You know, it's just awesome to watch. And you're like, man, I, I like that. I want to do that a whole lot. If you're not physically preparing yourself down here, then the sexiness will only last for a little bit. And then it'll go away because something bad is going to happen down the road. You might be able to get away with it for the first little bit, but we're in this to build athletes for a lifetime. All right, so I'm not going to shortcut to go into the sexy stuff until we have established some basic strength and conditioning. All right, if that takes you a year, it takes you a year. If it takes you six months, it takes you six months. All right, now we've got some standards, some number standards that we kind of can associate with these that, that tell us roughly you're physically ready to do this, and we'll slowly drip this in. It's okay, but don't imagine that you're going to come in on day one and, you know, do like a body weight air squat and then immediately go into 50 box jumps uh, rebounding for time. That's probably not very, not savvy on our part. And so once now I establish our body control, our body awareness, then I got to do it while holding an external object. All right. So the sport of weightlifting or throwing, that was a bug that just went by the screen. That was amazing. The sport of weightlifting is barbell gymnastics. So I'm holding a heavy barbell now, and I'm pulling that barbell up, and I'm moving myself around it. If you don't have this basic awareness in gymnastics or this basic level of strength and conditioning, then weightlifting is not going to be uh, as easy as it could be. All right? Now, I'm not saying weightlifting is easy by any means at all, but it gets easier the more you have established strength and conditioning. And the more you have established some uh, some gymnastic kind of capabilities. All right, this is also in like the traditional sporting world where you see lots of throwing coming in. All right, so like shot put, discus, football, like quarterback, baseball throwing for pitching and stuff like that. It only happens once you've established all this stuff. So what a lot of a lot of strength and conditioning folks do is they'll play with this for a little bit. And then skip completely the, the gymnastic phase, that like shoulder strengthening, plyometric work, to get to the sexier stuff up here. Man, we all want to be able to throw a 90-mile-an-hour fastball. We all want to be able to snatch 225 pounds. But I can't do that unless I establish strength and conditioning first, some sort of gymnastic slash plyometric ability, and then slowly build the weightlifting into it. If I try to get sexy before I'm ready, then sexy time's not going to last very long. All right? You'll do it for a little bit, but then your body's going to break down. And then once you establish that, then sport, sport gets easier. All right? It gets easier. But let's now talk about how we kind of divide this up. All right? So we have two populations that we're really concerned with. One is a true athlete. All right, so you're in a sports season right now, like NFL is in season, college football is in season. Um, you're training for a sport, all right? You're training. So your training actually looks like you spend in, like the professional ranks, you spend 99% of the time training and 1% of the time in your actual sport. Look at any of the, of the time commitments you give like an NFL football player. That's kind of redundant, but they spend Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in practice and film study and things like that. So they're doing all of this stuff beforehand and their game lasts for 60 minutes. All right. So it's 99% training, 1% in sport. Now your average Joe, me and you, all right, they're a little different. All right. We spend... We spend 99% of the time in sport life for us, all right, better life, that's sport, and nutrition. So 99% of our time is in nutrition and life. And 1% of our time is devoted to training. All right, so it's, you know, 160 hours, let's give or take, in a week, all right, and you get to train for three of those hours. That's 1%, all right, 1%. So our job in the gym and your job as the athletes is to maximize that 1%, right? And you maximize that 1% by first 
and always focusing on the basics, all right? We're gonna take care of nutrition, all right? You're gonna take care of that on your own. We're always gonna help you out with that stuff, but we've got to remember this is the most important part of this part of the pyramid, all right? Getting to the snatches, getting to the super cool muscle ups, it doesn't matter if this isn't there yet, all right? It doesn't matter, all right? It, it, you'll, you'll be able to get there pretty quickly. Like I feel fairly confident I can teach any one of our athletes at any time to do uh, butterfly kipping pull-ups, all right? That's just, we can do that. All right, you've got the physical ability to do that. But unless you first establish that, so you demonstrate the ligament and tendon strength to do that, and you develop a little bit of that local muscular endurance to do that, then why am I going to force it? All right. If you uh, if you come in and you can't overhead squat the barbell, then why am I going to teach you how to do a snatch? All right. I've got to go back and develop that rudimentary strength and conditioning. And guys, I'm not saying rudimentary like it's a bad thing. I spend most of my time as an athlete developing the basics. How does your air squat look? All right. How does your barbell back squat look? How does your strict shoulder press look? How do your seven primal movements, how does that default movement pattern look? And you guys that don't know our seven primals, uh, get this from our guys at Power Athlete uh, CrossFit Football. All right. We have a squat, we have a hinge, and we have kind of a multi-axis movement. So we, have, we squat, we deadlift or kettlebell swing, and we do like a lunge or step up every single week. All right. Then you have vertical and horizontal push and pull, all right? You get those seven things every single week. So even the coaching staff will practice this base level of strength. It's not always sexy time, all right? If it's always sexy time, then it's going to be a very short-lived athletic career, okay? We are here. Our goal is to create positive momentum in your life, give you the best hour of your day. And we do that through focusing on the fundamentals, focusing on the foundational movements always. All right now, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's real fun to snatch something heavy. It's very fun to go all out on Fran, all right? But you gotta earn it first, all right? So remember that, that we're always gonna take time and it's not a knock on you as an athlete, we all do it, all right? I know you guys heard me talk uh, several weeks ago about getting hurt uh, in my back, all right? I tried to go uh, too far up in the pyramid without first developing this again, and I, I got a little sloppy and got hurt, all right? I got, got hurt, but I've built it back up, all right? I've spent the last, since, the, since Rise of the South in uh, September, building strength slowly, my base level of strength slowly. I've been kind of creeping back into the conditioning piece slowly because my goal is to be fit for my entire life. I don't care about CrossFit games, right? I don't care about qualifying for any event. I want to be fit in my 50s, 60s, and 70s. I want to wake up at 88 and be able to touch my toes, right? That's the goal. That's my goal, right? It's great doing this stuff now, PR now, being strong is awesome but it doesn't matter if you're trying to go too fast too soon, All right? So this is the, the change pyramid, but change takes time, All right? So trust the change, trust the process about what we're doing with you and for you, always focusing on nutrition, always harping down to your basic strength and conditioning movements, and then we'll layer in the fun stuff, right? We'll layer in the stuff that is super, super sexy, because we all like it, we all like it, all right? Um, I really think that this is something that you guys all should know about, is our pyramid of how we develop people. Um, it is our contention, it's our, uh, it's our philosophy that we're gonna get you strong first. Gonna get you strong, gonna get you more conditioned first, because then the other stuff kind of takes, uh, takes it easier, all right? It, it makes it a little bit easier. Like, once you establish some strength, then the gymnastic stuff just gets easier, all right? Cool. Uh, more stuff you should know next time. And next Tacos Drewsday is going to be 
Halloween, Halloween day. So you might see me in costume on live video better than the wig the other day. All right. Do you guys have any questions about your personal journey, your personal uh, change pyramid, that delta sign, that beautiful pyramid that we all love? Uh, let me know. Comment down here uh, or just talk to me in the gym. All right. See you guys later. Happy Tacos Tuesday.